My name is Jane Thurgood. I'm 15 and I'm a sophomore in high school and I've been dancing for 13 years. So my name is Drew Guerra, I'm 19 years old, originally from California, but living in beautiful Dallas, Texas now, as you guys can see. Um, been here for about four years now, specifically Dallas, um, since 2019, well, 2019, 20, well, five years, actually. <laughs> and then before that, I lived in Houston, moved to, from Cali to Houston in 2012, and then moved here 2019. My name is Tom Cruz. I'm originally from Lakewood, Ohio, but I've been all over the world. Uh, I joined the military straight from uh, high, uh, college. I did about a quarter of a college and then dropped out, uh, joined the Army, did 26 and a half years in the Army, uh, and I deployed all around the world. Uh, my main job, I was a mechanic when I first joined in Airborne, jumped from planes, and then I went into uh, counterintelligence and human intelligence for the end of my career. The most significant personal challenges uh, I faced in my life was uh, about 13 years ago, uh, I had attempted suicide. Uh, 3 November of 2010, uh, I was picking up my fiance, which is now my wife, uh, Heather, and we had an argument no different than any uh, spouse would have, and I blacked out. I don't remember much of the situation, so much of what I tell you is actually <coughs> from her account. Uh, I held her hostage and was gonna attempt to kill both of us. And the really, really the only reason I'm alive today and she's alive is because of her ability to be able to talk me uh, out of that situation, uh, handle the people that were calling in and texting, and also she had to deal with the police at the same time. Uh, so that um, that was one that is the most significant uh, event in my life. A significant obstacle that I, you know, that I went through that kind of changed my life was a. Uh, I guess moving from here, like Houston to Dallas, if I'm being completely honest, because um, it was a little different. Or like when I was younger, I'm 19 now, but when I was younger, I didn't have like you know the best attitude. I had anger issues and just like a lot of little things like that. Um, so I didn't like really get along with everybody. You know, you can't get along with everybody, but you know, I wanted to be you know liked in some way. I think everybody does. Um, but I just think like the people that I was with. You know, they were hard to let go and it was hard to move away and start a new life because I didn't really have a choice, but it's also something I wanted to do. And I think that was really hard, but I think it made a huge difference and it was significant because now that I look back on it, I probably would have been, you know, one of the sad boys getting into drugs and dressing all black and thinking about, you know, how life's so bad, <laughs> you know, because, you know, right now, like I'm in love with it. There's so much opportunity out here. Loved living out here. It's completely changed my life and I've just had a new attitude that I feel like if I stayed where I originally was, it would have been a lot different. One personal challenge that I think I've had to face is that obviously within the dance world there's a lot of stigma around ballerinas and how they look and also how toxic the um, environment can be and so I think that it's kind of been a hurdle that all dancers have to get over kind of accepting who they are and accepting what they can do and I think that that's something that I've had to overcome too and just kind of being thankful for what I have especially what my body can do because I'm putting in a lot of hours a week and it's really hard on my body but it's doing good to keep up. Well when I come across like failures and setbacks I really focus on you know it sucks in the beginning like yeah I failed this and I failed that and dang like I didn't do it right but the best thing you can do is take what you what you did there learn from it and then do the complete opposite it's almost like what I tell kids like because I like teach scooter lessons and stuff if they make a mistake just really focus on doing the opposite if you're not putting one foot if one foot's missing the scooter when you're trying to land a trick focus on putting that other foot on and just keep that mindset of you take, have mistakes, learn from them, and then correct them and move on. Because if you stick on to them and you think about it like, oh, I did this, I'm, you know, like, I'm a failure, or whatever, you're going to stay that way. In competition world, it's definitely tough because you got hundreds of eyes watching you. Um, and then you have like that pressure in the back of your head like, oh, what if I mess up the first trick? Or what if I you know, don't get through this line? Or what if I do something that looks embarrassing? But you can't think about that. You got to remember the line or whatever you did that you practice and you got to try to execute it. And also think of like the audience, not necessarily as like watching you and like judging you because there are like judges and stuff, 
But just think about like you're doing a show. Don't so much of a not so much of a competition. You obviously want to kill it, but think more of like you're just performing. And you're doing a show, and then of course if you mess up, just like kind of like laugh it off, give a little good wave, and just you know have like a good bright attitude because nobody likes the rider who crashes and starts throwing a scooter everywhere. So my wife and son are both uh, trained in my triggers or trained to notice when I'm off, right? And so they know how to come come to me and try to work me out of that. Uh, but for me, when I'm noticing it, I go and go to jump on a, uh, on a quick game. And most of the video games that I play are only like 20 or 30 minutes long, right, for, per match. And what is that doing? When, you, when I, you do photography, I've got to go get the right lighting, I've got to get the right uh, pictures, I've got to get the right angles. And for me, what is that doing? It's resetting my brain to, to focus on something that I'm enjoying. And so when I do that, you t take pictures, you take a thousand of them, video games, 20 minutes, I've reset myself. So now I come back, sometimes I don't even remember why I was in a funk or what was wrong at that moment because I've reprogrammed my brain to focus on stuff that I enjoy. And so I believe that's a really key factor in, in mental health. There's a, there's a couple of things that kept me motivated to complete my goals uh, even when I had obstacles. One was my military career. Um, but mainly, the main reasons I'm able to continue to do what I'm doing right now um, and not ever hit those dark places is because of my family. Uh, because my wife did believe in me through that, through that night, through that day, um, and then ever since then she came and visited me the day, the day the incident happened. Instead of leaving me and running back to Ohio and being like, I'm out, she came and drove an hour and a half through traffic in D.C. to come see me every day while I was in the facility. Um. I did not make him the promise that I was going to stay with him when it happened, but I told him that I would be there for him. <clears throat> and so when he asked me to come visit him at Walter Reed, I did, like he said, the very first day I showed up. And I was stuck in traffic for a really long time, and there was only like 20 minutes left, I think, of visiting hours. There's these two little windows, and it's a locked unit. And he was standing at the desk pacing, waiting for me. And as soon as he saw my face in the window, he just crumpled to the ground and started crying. And as soon as they opened the door and let me in, I went down to him and I held him and I said, I'm here now. And he said, I didn't think you were gonna come. And I remember when I left thinking, I still love him so much, and I love him enough to try. And that's really all it was, it was just, I knew that I loved him enough that I could try. Have you ever experienced an anxiety, fear, or panic attack from a scooter? Oh yeah, <laughs> all the time. Um, I mean, there's like tricks, there's competition, there's, you know, pressure from like car shows and stuff, because I jump over cars and stuff like that. Um, but there's always like pressure and anxiety. Um, but it's just remember, it's just a thing where I gotta remember to like lock in, you know, I gotta do, yeah, I gotta perform, I gotta do my tricks, I gotta do what I wanna do. And I can't let that become a focus because if I'm going up for a big trick, say it's like a double backflip, and I'm thinking, oh, what if I land on my neck? What if I land on my head? What, what, what if this and what if that happens? I'm gonna do it, <laughs> I'm not locked in. But if I'm like, okay, it's here, you know, the anxiety's in the back of my mind and I have this fear, but I'm just gonna send it, I'm just gonna do it. Go up, send it, and you're fine. You know, just be willing, obviously have like those anxieties and they naturally come to you, it's just part of being human. But you can't make it like the front of your focus because I promise if you try to go do something and you make the fear and the doubt and the anxiety the front of your focus or like the priority, you're gonna mess it up, just guaranteed. Once my incident happened, I had to realize that the enemy doesn't really come from the outside that I've got to worry about all the time. I have to really worry about myself. Um, and I'm the one that's working on myself to become better. It's really hard to look at yourself and, and dissect yourself. We can dissect other people all day long and have no problem going, hey, that's good, that's bad. But when you really look at yourself, it's hard to do because you don't want to either admit the bad parts or a lot of us don't want to admit the good parts. So self-reflection for me, it, it helps me grow. It helped me grow through, through the incident. How can I be a better person? How can I be a better father, husband, and a person within in my community as I go through these, uh, go these, through these struggles? And self-reflecting helps me also 
become better for myself, right? It, it, because I had been diagnosed with a lot of mental health illnesses, uh, it, if I don't self-reflect, it'll get me back to that dark, dark spot that I don't want to ever go back to. I think you just need to remember that at the end of the day, you're never going to be perfect no matter how much you put in. And I think that that's the beauty of it is that everybody has their own style almost. Everybody does some things really well and has some things that they need to work on. And that is really special because there's always something that you can be striving for. And I think you need to respect and appreciate what your body does for you because it's a very challenging sport and it's not something that everybody has the discipline to do. And so I think you should be thankful and keep trying and keep persevering, but keep that in mind as well. I think people I definitely do like need help with like mental health because um, it's a real thing. You know, there's times where we're, we get super stressed or, you know, there's just situations that get so stressful that it really like distorts our view of reality. But I think like you've got to really try to stay strong and remember, you know, what you were focusing on before that made you like happy and made you locked in essentially. You know, there's obstacles that like I said, distort your view of the world and like really make you go crazy. But you got to remember that it's that obstacle that's causing it. And if you can get rid of that, you won't have to deal with that. And it can be super challenging. And some people do need help, which is great. You know, I'm not, I'm not all for saying, oh, people with mental health, like work on it yourself. Like, no, if you have someone like at your back, that's totally cool too. Because obviously having support around you has a big impact on somebody. But also like you as an individual, if you can just lock in and remember that this is just an obstacle, then you can fix it if you really focus on it. I love being on stage and I love getting to do rehearsals and do shows, but I also love the discipline of it. I think it's something that has really grown my self-discipline as well because it's something that I've worked so hard for and it's something that I want to push myself to keep improving. I think that dance has been something that has really been a support system for me because it's something that makes me really happy and it's really really important to me and I don't really know what I would do without dance because that sounds kind of cliche but I think that it's something that I'm really heavily involved in and that has proved to be a big support because it gives me something to do every day and it gives me something to want to strive to be better for which I think is really really important. I think the biggest thing with anyone who's struggling with mental health because like I said, it's obviously a real thing, is that it can go away. Just know that. If you know it can go away, it eventually has to go away, right? So just know that it can go away and you can definitely make it better. You just gotta focus on the right things. And so no matter what age you are, I believe having that one support system and somebody third party to be able to go talk to that isn't connected, that you can be able to just voice. And again, you may not get what you like out of that situation, but at least it's somebody else seeing it from a different scope that can help you work through whatever you're having with. And if you if you don't have a support system, then you need to find somebody that does support you. Uh, I know in some places, whether it be neighborhoods or households may not be as supportive, but you've got to find some way because eventually uh, you don't want something to happen, like, like something to happen to me.